In today's video, I'm going to be telling you how to pick the perfect piercing for you. As a piercer, I get asked this a lot, what piercing should I get? It's really hard to tell someone what piercing they should get because like, I don't know you. Unless it's a client that has come back a lot of times and I've learned a little bit about them, I literally have no idea who you are. If you're going to get a piercing, you kind of know what piercings you like, like what you prefer, what you like the look of. Everyone has their own taste, so everyone's going to be different, so I can't personally just tell you you should get this piercing because you might not like it and I like it like we're two completely different people so I've sort of made it like a little quiz so that you can work out what is going to work for you and what probably isn't going to work for you whether it's activities that you do that are going to affect the piercing or the healing of the piercing or whether it's work, parents, whatever it is I've sort of tried to think of questions around many different people's lifestyles to help you pick what is going to work for you. And for people who can't work out what they want, this can give you some ideas. I think a great question to begin with, because a lot of people do get cartilage piercings, is are you a side sleeper? If you are a side sleeper, probably not a great idea to get a cartilage piercing. Not that you can't, you just need to think about the fact that you aren't going to be able to sleep on this piercing for probably about two months. A lot of people come in with piercing bumps and the first question a lot of piercers will ask them is, are you sleeping on it? Majority of people will say, well, I try not to, but I roll onto that side. If you're going to be rolling around in your sleep a lot at night time, you're going to be putting pressure on those piercings at some point and it's really something you need to think about beforehand. But if you aren't a side sleeper or you know you don't move around a lot when you're sleeping, cartilage piercings in your ear will be perfectly fine for you. People who are side sleepers though, I find that a vertical tragus can really work though. Just because it isn't through cartilage, it's a surface piercing, it's still not great to be sleeping on all the time, however it's like pretty close to your ear so it fits in around the ear so it's tucked away and it's not like on the front of your face. When you get ulcers in your mouth, do you find that you tend to lick them or play with them or touch them? It might sound like a weird question, but it does help to work out if you're going to be playing with your oral piercings. If you're licking or playing or chewing on like an ulcer in your mouth, you probably are going to play with your tongue bar a whole damn lot and this could then lead to you know chipping your teeth or eroding the gums is something that you want to avoid because one piercing down the line could cost you a whole lot more money than you need to so that is something to think about. If you don't and you leave them alone, I'd say you're fine with a tongue piercing. Do you need to hide your piercings for work or school? It's all well and good that you can change your piercings to clear retainers after they are healed. However, if you're going to go into work or school tomorrow and they're going to tell you to take it out, you can't just go in and put a retainer in there straight away. It's probably going to close up as soon as you take it out and it's also probably going to give you an infection or screw with the healing. If you're wanting to hide piercings, I recommend going with a navel piercing, whether it's the top or the bottom. These are very easy to hide. You could also go with hip piercings or collarbone piercings as these are all piercings that are underneath your shirt. Dermals are another option that you can hide because you can pretty much put them on any flat surface so you could get back dimples they're also really pretty and if you're over the age of 18 nipples and genital piercings are always a go-to have you had braces so if you've had braces I recommend staying the hell away from oral piercings I can't talk because I have a Medusa and I had braces majority of the time I do tend to wear a bioplast librette bar in my Medusa because I don't want that erosion of the gums or damage on my teeth. Having braces just sort of makes you think about how much money was spent on your oral health, how important it is to not screw that up. Do you need to hide this piercing from your parents? A lot of people think that a navel or a tongue is easy to hide from parents, however a lot of the time you will slip up and they will see these ones. A perfect piercing is a septum piercing, as long as you remember to flip it up before you go home. Another one that no one's ever going to see unless you physically show them is your tongue webbing. That one's perfect because you literally have to lift your tongue up to show someone and speaking you don't see it so that's a perfect one. Do you have a job or an activity that you're involved in that requires heavy lifting? I say the piercings to avoid if you're heavy lifting or you're leaning things against your body or anything like that is a navel and hip piercings as these are pretty much always going to get pulled or caught. Do you wear high-waisted shorts or high-waisted clothing? Try to work out where it's sitting on you. A lot of the time it does sit 
on the top navel position so getting a bottom navel may be a better option for you. Do you wear earbud headphones? So the ones that go into your ear. They can be a really big problem for things like a tragus and a daith piercing just because they're constantly putting germs into your new piercing and rubbing against it a lot, putting pressure on that area. I would say avoid these and go for something around the outside of the cartilage because that way those earbuds are not going to be irritating those areas. Are you allowed facial piercings? Whether it's your parents won't allow it or it's work or school, whatever it is. If you want something in and around this area but you don't want the scarring or the visibility of it, get a tongue piercing. They're always one to go for. It's still in and around your face area. People can still see it when you're talking so they can tell you have a piercing. It's not going to be visible majority of the time. Do you want a piercing that isn't going to leave a visible scar? I would go with a date because it's so far in your ear no one's ever going to see that scar and also a tongue because majority of the time they don't really scar and no one's ever really going to see it are they? Do you get bad hay fever or you find you're sick a lot with a runny nose? I would recommend not going for a nose piercing, especially when they're healing. They're going to be very irritated by you touching it a lot or blowing your nose a lot. Even once it is healed, hi I'm sick so I can talk about this right now. Even once it is healed, it's basically just, it's just annoying to have to blow your nose because, I mean, I probably can't talk because I have three nose piercings plus a septum as well that is just always in the way if you need to blow your nose. I find that I take them out when I'm sick because I just find it too annoying. Do you do a lot of sports? <laughs> Where there's, yes, I know what this is going to sound like, balls flying at your face. Anytime that is happening, facial piercings are not going to be fun. Neither are cartilage piercings because like you could have a cartilage piercing completely healed and wham, bam, thank you man, a ball hits your like ear and that shit's going to be irritated as f where like you're doing a lot of sit-ups and that sort of thing, navel piercings can get very irritated. So probably for sports, just a plain earlobe is probably the best to go for, or like a few on your ear, you could probably do three and you'd be fine. Are you a smoker or a drinker? A lot of oral piercings can be very affected by smoking and drinking. A lot of people think you can just clean them and it'll be fine, but I have seen some <laughs> bad oral piercings from smoking and drinking. It's obviously in that initial healing period when it is crucial that you need to sort of avoid that just because it can either prolong your healing or it will just never heal. Go for a nose piercing, an eyebrow piercing or an anti-eyebrow piercing. All of these can be facial piercings without being oral. So just think about all these questions and sort of like look at what works for you and what doesn't work for you and your lifestyle and then sort of pick from there. Let me know in the comments down below if you're going to get any of these piercings or what your next piercing is going to be. Please give this video a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed already, please do that down below as well. I put out heaps more piercing videos so I hope to see you back here soon. All right, see ya.